That's all I hear. Morning, hi, Jay Head. Might as well be dead. My favorite little song. You old Paul McCartney. John <laughs> Lennon made what I think was maybe the ultimate psychedelic statement later on that song. He said at one point, Rain and sun's the same. I can show you. <laughs> oh, pharmaceutical help. <laughs> I have two quick stories I want to tell. I first got to tell you about the theatrical debut of Olivia Soul, our dear friend May Soul, 14 year old daughter. She's last week was the lead in Greece. At the McKinley Junior High School production. Crazy! She was wonderful. But the thing that was amazing to me, truly mind boggling, was that, well, I gotta tell you first of all, I went to a 100% white high school. I was born in St. Louis, but I went to high school in Kansas City, yeah. Southwest High School. We had about 2,000 students and zero African Americans. Zero in the neighborhood, zero in the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade school I went to. I didn't have a black acquaintance. I didn't meet a black guy until I got into college. <laughs> And that was Mizzou, and there weren't many of them down there. I didn't have a black friend until I got into the Navy. <laughs> Single man named Jim got me high for the first time. How could he not be my friend? <laughs> <laughs> but, if you recall the movie Grace, Olivia Newton-John, Sandy, had to deal with the tough guys in black leather jackets with ducktails and hints of switchblades. In the McKinley High School production, Olivia had to deal with the black guys in order to get next to John Travolta, who looked like a senior high school football player on steroids. A big kid. And completely diverse audience, took it all in and cheered when they were supposed to, and booed when they were supposed to, just had a wonderful time. John Travolta gives Olivia his ring, she kissed him, everybody cheered, there was no hooting and hollering, there was no racial divide, it's just kind of a miracle, I thought, and there would have been a lynching when I went to high school if that had happened. <laughs> but <laughs> I did write a haiku about that. Who knew she could sing? Voice like a damn angel. Sweet Olivia. <laughs> when I was a Christian, and I <laughs> haven't been one in a long time, but I still like Easter. I never did believe in that empty tomb magic Jesus mumbo jumbo, but I always liked Easter. I generally got new clothes. That was maybe how my mom convinced me to like Easter. But it was always a big deal in our house. We always went to church on Easter, never missed an Easter Sunday. I probably heard a million Easter sermons. I do not remember any of them at all, except my very favorite Easter service it was in San Francisco in 1970. And I remember it completely, which is ironic because it was the most stoned I've ever been at a church service. <laughs> And when admittedly it was a very short sermon, <laughs> but I do remember it word for word. <laughs> Stephen Gaskin, know about him? Saint Stephen with a rose, in and out of the garden he goes. Grateful Dead wrote a song about him called Saint Stephen. 
He was a real guy. I started off at uh, San Francisco State, moved down to the Hate Theater, which they renamed the Straight Theater. And when I got to town in 1969, they had moved out for the family dog on the Great Highway. <clears throat> Joined about the size of Mississippi Nights. You can maybe get a thousand people in there. And every Monday night, he taught this free class and filled the place up. A big part of it probably was that marijuana was a big part of his doctrine. He believed it was a strong tool that could be used as a sacrament that could aid you in a life of truthfulness and compassion, which were probably his two main components of his teachings. And after the ultimate tragedy, he decided we needed something more spiritual. So he began conducting Sunday morning sunrise services. I think it was Buena Vista was the name of the park. I'm not sure about that. It was up the hill a ways from the family dog. And it was right across the great highway from the Cliff House restaurant in Seal Rock, if you know San Francisco. We would meet there about 5.30, 6 a.m. in the parking lot of the park and uh, start swapping dope. <laughs> By 6 a.m., everybody was generally pretty well loaded, and we'd have to often, because it was foggy, and we were looking west, and the sun was coming up behind us, we had to kind of decide that it was sunrise. Stephen would blow on his conch horn, and we would own, and we would own. nearly lifted off the ground many times doing that on Sunday mornings. Easter Sunday morning, there was a few more people, couples, three, four hundred people maybe. And there was, of course, plenty of the best weed in San Francisco. And at least two people brought those big old picnic thermos jugs. Do you remember those? They're often brown, plated. Held five gallons, I think. And they were filled halfway full with peyote buttons, and boiling water filling them up. <laughs> Made a wonderful, strong tea, which we all took of generously. <laughs> By the time we started Omen, everything was going jibbity, jibbity, jibbity. <laughs> Began seeing uh, power vortexes and uh, dragons and shit, you know, <laughs> fancy stuff. As was our usual procedure, then we proceeded up into the park and gathered around this tree stump. And Stephen would climb up on the tree stump. And unless there had been something really big that had happened in the community or on the news that we, of course, talk about that, but if there wasn't, he would just wait a while till something bubbled up that he wanted to talk about. Well, this morning it took longer than usual. Stephen stood and waited, and we stood and waited. Stephen reached down into his jean jacket pocket, sparked up a doobie, took a few hits, passed it down into the crowd, waited a while longer, looked down at his shoes for a long time, finally looked up with a big smile on his face. And he said, there's a new green shoot growing up out of this old dead stump. That's what Easter's all about. And we all know what Easter's all about. So that's all I'm going to say. Me too. Love that's love, not 